Winning the Delano Polo Award for the round of Colorado is Melanie Clevno in the Lynx Racing 12 car with Gaspar de Souza on the outside of the front row. Kevin Dwyer and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. make up a surprise second row and Zelda Ashby puts both FPO cars in the top five. Speaking of FPO, there's a fair bit of news, strange bit of news going on about them. Uh, it appears that there were a couple of police cars uh, near their haulers actually uh, earlier this morning and uh, it also appears that that was... Um, that uh, there's been some inquiries into uh, some of FPO's business dealings lately, uh, in particular with the uh, the rather infamous now Core Hall Group, and uh, earlier in the year, of course, they had the uh, the Umbrella Corporation sponsorship, which went bust due to um, the uh, very unfortunate events at uh, Dracoon City. So, uh, that being the case, um, FPO's found themselves in quite a bit of hot water with the authorities, it seems, uh, but uh, both cars were allowed to start uh, here today. As you can see there, all th there are three independence trophy cars starting at the back of the grid. This race will count for independence points for them and it will uh, serve as a mulligan basically. They will eliminate the worst result that they get in the independence trophy. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Melanie Cleveno is on the on the pole in the 12 car as you see right there. Kevin Dwyer though on that Schaefer Sapphire 72 right behind her. Quiggles Jr. trying to make some headway coming into the first corner as Gaspar D'Souza wants to stay off the concrete because there's a pretty big bump in the exit of Rockies. Gaspar D'Souza might get the drop, but cleveno has got the run. And I know D'Souza made an early bid for the lead. This is his best start this season, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Cleveno nearly wipes it out in Colin Suttle in the first lap. Uh, with that Armco barrier has moved back about six or seven inches after the Independence Trophy Invitational. Uh, so... Uh, uh, good thing that was done just in time uh, to avoid uh, some of the incidents that we saw in that race. But D'Souza hanging on to Melanie Cleveland. It looked like everyone got through Collins just fine. Here are the two alert cars as you see uh, the running order on the left. Running 12th and 13th, Davenport over Michael Sykes. Sykes and Launch Energy are looking ready to pair up with Inglesby for a possible split with Adam Sampson. Um, now that is of course a rumor. We're not quite sure how, how much truth there is to that, but um, indications from Davenport, uh, Michael Sykes' uh, wingman over at Alert, indicate that that very much might be the case. So, um, not really sure what's going on over there, but uh, there's a fair bit of off-track drama uh, going on with Alert, and uh, really, I think, Mike, I think it really might affect Michael Sykes' championship bid. He is second in the, in the standings. Troy Adams' drive is in doubt for next year. I wonder if Alert could uh, hire him because he hasn't really been doing that. But Oh, there's a crash in front of him and Adams is in and he's out. Troy Adams in the 18 car, totally blindsided. But that was Davina Henson, the Cariala winner, in the 11 car, near contact with the 777 car. Me and Cooper and into the end of the pit wall. Oh, Peter Short in it and Troy Adams is nowhere to go. And Henson, another wild ride early on in a race. And Henton out of it. She was a little shaken up, but uh, she got out of the car by herself. Oh, that was uh, that was a scary one early in the race. Uh, anyways, here's Adrian Dever, the lead driver at Hodges Walter Racing. Uh, he has been re-signed uh, to that team officially. As it looks like Scott Bates may have tagged along the background, but uh, that green car behind him, that is his current teammate, Luciano's. Oh, Chris Hans moves over on Adrian Dever. That wasn't all that nice. Uh, Luciano Savar all in the three car. Uh, might be uh, might be uh, leaving that team. Uh, largely, I, I do believe the uh, the main holdup on Luciano's contract could be uh, salary, um, because I do believe that uh, Savarol had to take a bit of a pay cut this year for uh, budget reasons, and um, well, not quite sure who uh, who would be replacing Luciano if he left. Melanie Kalivno, who is currently leading the race is a top candidate, but there's a couple others in the field as well that might be uh, interested in that ride. Matthias Taub, who leads the championship, has also apparently been considered. And uh, here is Savarol in that three car. You see Peter Short limping back to the pits uh, in that 22 car. Short out of it. Um, here's Arto Kekin in the nine car. He's uh, not a contender, I can tell you, because Arto is going to be driving a Gessler in 2014. Oh, uh, near contact with Savarol and Kekkonen as they're chasing down Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. The seal and there's Kekkonen runs Savarol into the into the uh, the dirt over there. That wasn't very nice. 
Here is um, Scott Bates in the 88 car, the Indy winner. Oh, he tags the wall. Oh, he's into Greg Woodard, and Scott Bates is rolling the 88 car. And uh, his teammate, Ian Cooper, jams on the brakes to miss him. Greg Woodard, nowhere to go but into the side of the 88 car. And the 777 car, uh, I mean, Cooper drops to the field. I don't think uh, Bates made contact with the 5 car at all. It looks like Bates actually tried to avoid contact and just misjudged it and hit the uh, and hit the end of the wall over there. As Kuznetsov hits the, hits the wall for no reason at all. There goes Jacob Eicholtz. Here's looking back at the two Tinos. Ben Atkins and Alessandro Rossini. Oh, contact! Oh, the 777 car! And Ian Cooper just knocked both of them out! Just took out both two Tinos. I saw that car dart over to the right suddenly, and both two Tinos out of it. <laughs> and the pit wall on the triple seven, taking a great bit of amusement in uh, um, whatever that was. Anyways, Matthias Taub in the 10 car is going to lead the points, entering the two Australian races no matter what happens to him here today. He's padding his lead quite nicely as he's running up in 12. And uh, really... The way that Taub has been running in the second half of the year is really, um, he's been rock solid. And uh, it's going to be very difficult to unseat for the championship, it looks like at this rate. As Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. in the 99, going backwards, uh, he's had a lot of very questionable sponsor deals fall through. There was, as Lance mentioned, the Umbrella and the Core Hall sponsorship. And of course, now the uh, the sons of Core Hall in uh, sort of in hot water. And uh, so, Quiggles Jr. not exactly having... Um, the most quiet of seasons off track, uh, and on track he's been actually not that uh, not that bad of a driver. I've been fairly impressed with him. Speaking of impressive, Kevin Dwyer in the 72 cars doing his best to hold off Leonard Roderick, but um, well, the Volpe has a has a better car than the Juno. I don't think anyone's going to argue that. And Roderick goes right on by uh, Kevin Dwyer. Leonard Roderick, car number four, a four-time TM Master Cup Series drivers champion. Hunting down uh, Zelda Ashby and Gaspar D'Souza. Roderick was quickest in all of the practice sessions that we had this week. And he's currently hun hunting down Zelda Ashby for that elusive podium position. Roderick's teammate, Packer Carroll, was actually fairly quick as well. So the Volpe apparently very suited to this racetrack as they enter Rocky's Bend. Uh, the first corner, the very banked corner. Gaspar D'Souza is uh, continuing to hold off Zelda Ashby. Oh, Ashby hits the, there's a bump on the inside of Rocky's. Coming off, off of there, but uh, the Susans had some real magic early in the season. Uh, he kind of fell off a bit in the middle of the season, but this is easily his best run all year. There's some rumors going around that he might be moving into a top team. Uh, there was a rumor started, I believe, by Vernstrom, and I'll get to that in a minute, but that uh, Gaspar de Souza would be moving over to the Gessler team at uh, Matthias Taub's expense, and that Taub would be moving over to drive one of the factory Vernstroms. Now, considering that Vernstrom has more or less got a... Uh, whoa! Ashby all over the place. Um, as, um... Now, uh, considering that Vernstrom might have started that rumor, uh, yeah, I think I can... Considering how well Taub is running... Well, anyways, be that as it may, we're looking off the back of Lena to Roderick's car. Looking back at Zelda Ashby as Kevin Dwyer. Oh, it took a bit of a while to choose his lane there, holding off Adrian Devereaux. Uh, Adrian Devereaux, though, in the, in the altar is going to go right on by. Speaking of Adrian Devereaux, there's some rumor that there might be a new sponsor on that car next year on both the Hodges Walter cars. Um, I'll have to wait and see how that uh, see how that uh, develops, but uh, that could be a little bit odd seeing a Hodges Walter car not carrying the Haas manufacturing logos and uh, that uh, sort of killer shark livery that they've got. But Kevin Dwyer, uh, Kevin Dwyer is holding off Luciano Savarov, and uh, there's actually some rumors that Kevin Dwyer's younger siblings might be moving into TM Lights next year. So wouldn't that be uh, exciting to see? Another Dwyer entering entering uh, into the series, possibly. As Luciano Savaral trying to set up Kevin Dwyer, who is doing a fantastic job holding him off. Uh, funny, we haven't heard anything, any rumors about Kevin Dwyer going to, um, to a better ride than what he's got, because Dwyer's been doing fantastic in um, the past couple of races. He, did, he starred at Road America. Uh, didn't necessarily quite have the run he wanted at Indy because, uh, well, that car is just not quite good enough. But uh, he's really had the measure over Zach Duff, and he's been doing what he needs to do, which is uh, grab the headlines and get some great qualifying runs in. And, uh, well, qualifying uh, sometimes half the battle. Chris Davenport is running in ninth, and he, this is easily one of his best showings all season. He hasn't hit anything, surprisingly, with walls this close to the track. 
Um, there was actually a couple of people guessing which wall Davenport would hit. He hasn't hit any of them yet. Uh, believe it or not, he actually has had an incident-free uh, weekend so far. As Arto Kakinen continues to do battle with um, Luciano Savarol, and it looks like uh, Savarol wasting all that time behind Kevin Dwyer is actually going to cost him quite a bit of, uh, going to cost him another position to Arto Kakinen. And as you can see, Kevin Dwyer pulling away. And you can kind of see why it's easy for uh, Kevin Dwyer to hold on to that position because this is not the easiest track to pass on. Therefore, qualifying well is actually, uh, well, put it quite a premium here. As Matthias Taub has gotten around, Chris Davenport in the background, Gaspar D'Souza in the double zero car, we're on lap 15 of 40. This is a much shorter race than usual, and the series officials before the start of this race did say that everyone's going to have to make two stops for tires, even though on fuel they can make it on one. Uh, so that's a bit of an interesting call from the officials, and right after D'Souza got passed for second, he's coming into the pits. So, that's about when we expected, actually, some teams to pit for tires. Uh, the tire compound brought's a bit softer than usual, and, uh, some teams thought they might not have to change tires, but, uh, then the series official said, yes, you're changing tires, you're making two stops. Uh, because, uh, most other Master Cup races are done with two stops a race, so... That being said, that is making this race a bit interesting. Um, you can argue whether or not that's artificial or not, but um, uh, no one cares. Chris Johans is running up in 12th place in the number 29 Manicor car. Um, Johans has uh, been—he's been doing quite well here. This track a little similar to Wales, and he where he also did well, and he pits from 12th. So, actually, that uh, whole force two stops has actually opened the pit windows quite, uh, actually, very wide. So uh, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen someone pit earlier than lap 12, or lap uh, 15. Just looking at car 12. Um, that helps when I get my numbers correct. Uh, anyways, as uh, she's having a bit of difficulty, is Melanie Cleave now lapping Greg Woodard in the 41 car who got in that incident with Scott Bates earlier. Woodard into the wall. Cleave now squeezed him out. That might not have been the best idea. Um, especially if you saw what happened to VJ Pouchon on the Independence Trophy Invitational. Lena Droderick in car number four. Uh, is quickly running Melanie Clevno down. The number four Volpe, uh, Roderick, is uh, really kind of um, really kind of uh, challenging as Clevno hits the pit lane. Melanie Clevno in car number 12 has come into the pit lane, and it looks like the 55 did as well. Roderick having some issues, lapping Greg Woodard as well. Here's Scott Stoiler, car 28, the second Manicor Engineering car. Whoa! Stoiler got a bit... Oh, whoa! Hit the end of the... Hit the pit wall right there! But uh, Stoiler had to quickly save that car, so um, I don't know. He might have had a tire go down or something that caused him to lose control there, because that's what it looked like. And then right when he gathered it up, he realized he was headed straight for the pit wall. Adrian Devereaux in the one car, hits the pit lane. Luciano in, Kevin Dwyer in, Arto Kekkonen in. Here's, you have, here's you have Jenny Kuznetsov, Gino Kuznetsov. He's in, he lapped down in 19. Taub is lap. Oh! Because he into the wall. Oh no! Davenport right into the side of the eight car in Collins Tunnel. Really nowhere for Davenport to go. It's the first incident he's been involved in all weekend, and it's not of his own doing, and it's going to wipe him out of the race. So, well, have to give Davenport this. At least he didn't take himself into the wall for once. And uh, to be fair to Davenport, during the races, he has been more dependable. Uh, lately, he did win at Quincy in a race where everyone but him seemed to lose their brains. And here we are looking at that uh, camera we have in the infield. As you see, Melanie Klevno go by the pit wall, uh, go by the end of the pit wall, and Leonid Roderick is just leaving the pits right behind her. So Klevno hangs on to the lead. They've got a lap car. Looks like one of the cats is. It could be Yulia Sova. Well, it is going to be Yulia Sova because it's the only cats that's still running, and it is. And uh, um, Leonid Roderick enters Collins Tunnel, trailing. Seven car and looking for Adrian Devereaux right behind him. Uh, that's odd. Where'd Devereaux go? Uh, I see Ashby right there in the bottom of the screen. So where'd the one car go? Oh, Devereaux slowing. That could explain it because Devereaux was. Uh, oh no! Big problems in car number one. Adrian Devereaux out of it. He has. Had, he was third in the championship. The two-time reigning Master Cup champion out of the race. Car number one. There he is, Gaspar D'Souza, running in fourth now. And uh, this double zero car looks like pitting early wasn't really a good idea. But uh, Gaspar D'Souza in this double zero car is quicker than Zelda Ashby at the moment. So uh, 
Asusa might not have made uh, the worst pit call in the world. They, uh, the team absolutely threw it for him at Indy. And as you can see, the running order on the left, Luciano Salvarol is running in sixth. So Salvarol having a solid run today in that three car. He's a little too far out of it to be a serious title contender, which is unfortunate because he nearly won twice early in the season. But on both instances, a Volpe took him out in the last lap. So uh, uh, that being said, Salvarol still having good runs. And he's still running. Whoa, Gaspar de Souza having some issues lapping Scott Stoidler, who's... Uh, I wonder if that cut tire isn't the only thing wrong with that 28 car, but be that as it may, uh, Matthias Taub being a bit cautious getting around that 28 car, and uh, Taub letting Gaspar D'Souza get away. I think Taub is points racing at the moment, and uh, some people may be very critical of people at points race all the time, saying, you know, well, you have to race for the win all the time, but uh, really, uh, I think that's, uh, that's a sign of someone who's clearly looking, uh, he's clearly looking to the future, but uh, the way you points race in the TM Master Cup Series isn't by running, you know, in the midfield, 15th through 20th. No, you got to run in the top 10 to really be a serious uh, title contender. And that's what Taub has really been doing. He leads the series, if I'm not mistaken, in top 10s as Melanie Klebno is um, being caught by Leonid Roderick in that number four car. So here's Zelda Ashby in podium contention in this 55 car. Now, Ashby is also sort of an outside title contender. But uh, blowing up at Indy, I don't think helped. And uh, the fact that Matthias Taub is running as well as he is isn't helping either. Uh, but Ashby will still gain quite a few points on Taub, uh, even though Taub will gain points over his main rivals. Uh, that 55 car, don't count Ashby out, but depending on what happens with FPO, Ashby might have to run the Australian races with a totally different team, and that might be a bit unsettling for Ashby. There is the clockwork racing car that supposedly entered for the uh, the Australian races, but whether or not Ashby will be in the midnight would be um, would be something else. I don't think anyone's ever won the Master Cup Championship driving for two different teams in a season. That would certainly be a first. Here is uh, Gaspar de Souza in that double zero car, the uh, distinctive Clever Media Black. It's, oh, he gets sideways on the rumble ship, nearly wipes out Taub. Here comes Luciano Savaro going three wide here. Oh, this could end in tears. Uh, Taub doesn't. Oh, Taub duh, holds on. Matthias Taub. Um, driving as hard as he can now to hang on to fifth because um, well, he doesn't want Luciano Salvaro getting by him. Gaspar de is in the top ten in points, but I don't think Taub is worried about him. Uh, I think Taub would be, uh, well, I'm not sure how content Taub would be to just sit behind Gaspar de Souza and ride the whole way to the end. Um, Taub is a pretty smart driver, but at the same time, uh, I don't think uh, he wants anyone to be in front of him if he can help it, especially with Luciano breathing down his neck. Yuli Nasova in the seven car hits the pit lane, which opens, which gets the, a lap car out of the way of this battle here as the infield camera is on the double zero car. Um, we'll zoom on this camera, probably needs to be uh, fixed a little bit. Uh, anyways, as uh, Taub laying back a little bit, Savarol in the bright green car. Here's Leonid Roderick, who's now caught the back of Melanie Klevno, and uh, that's Kurt Fliskin in that dark green 16 car. Uh, who has kind of ignored the fact that blue flags exist. So uh, let's see if Pliskin uh, is actually a bit of a gentleman who moves out of the way. No, it doesn't look like he is. So um, granted, Pliskin has not been the easiest person to, to lap on some occasions. And given the fact that he's also in the points, I don't think is making that situation any easier for Melanie Klevno. Pretty sure Leonard Ro Oh, Roderick a bit wide. Um... Odd mistake, but anyways, Roderick now trying to close in on the 12 car. Or he's not really able to do so because he got a terrible run down the main straight into Rockies. And Melanie Klevno again getting held up by a Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car, but uh, this lane, the Lynx car just not fast enough in a straight line really to go right by him. I can't say Melanie Klevno is at all pleased with Kurt Pliskin at the moment, and uh, there's Kuznetsov in the 8 car up there, and I thought Cats of Engineering retired that car. I guess not. Leonard Roderick, though, really closing in, and I'm pretty sure Roderick is grinning ear to ear because, um, well, this pretty much is just uh, impeding Klevno from uh, really getting any kind of lead on him as, uh, oh, Klevno really getting boxed in. As Pliskin finally moves out of the way. No, he doesn't. Pliskin really out, uh, kind of squeezed the 12 car over on the main straight. That could have ended in disaster. I think he is actually racing because Nyat's off for a position, but this could cost Cleveland the lead. She's defending pretty aggressively on Roderick. And uh, 
Here comes Lewis Kingston in the 17 car. Kingston backs off just a little bit. Oh, uh, Roderick, you know, that, if he makes that move stick, now he thinks better of it. As, uh, thinks better of it. That could have been a huge disaster right there. Cleveland, no, oh, Roderick's got the better line there. And Roderick's going to go by. Clevno is going to lose the lead due to Kurt Pliskin not really knowing what the blue flag or the mirror is. And Roderick goes right on by, takes advantage of the back markers, and goes right on by. That's what experience helps. That's where experience really pays off. And, uh, oh, well, that's interesting. Kind of, uh, as Danny Salvin is off on the side of the course, looks like he's got a puncture on the 81 car. Leonard Roderick having a very easy time getting uh, people to move over for him. And uh, Melanie Clevno is not. Uh, all right then. That's how that works, I suppose. Here is the 55 of Zelda Ashby, who is running in third. And here is Gaspar D'Souza about to do the same thing. As you see how much ground Melanie Clevno has lost due to back markers not really getting out of her way at all. And uh, D'Souza goes on by. D'Souza onto the podium at the moment. Looking back also, there you see Taub is back there in the 10 car. He is slowly creeping up on this battle for third. And so is Luciano Savaral. D'Souza in that in that teal double zero car trying to work on Kuznetsov and Lewis Kingston. And uh, Kurt Pliskin at this point, he's a little out of line here. As uh, Pliskin is coming into the pits, and so is Melanie Cleveland at the same time. And, uh, oh, I have a feeling there were probably some gestures coming out of the cockpit of that 12 car towards Pliskin as Roderick stays out. Cleveland pitting early. Uh, that appears to have been a mistake. Here's Matthias Taub in car number 10. We're on board with, we're on board with the Swede as he makes a dive for the pits. The Souza reacts, pits as well, and there's contact in pit in between the between cars 10 and double zero. Taub squeezed the Souza over into the pit wall. The Souza came in and committed anyway, but um, uh, Black Diamond Racing absolutely livid with Taub, the championship leader. Now you can call that whatever you like, but Taub. Um, sort of just squeezed him over into the wall pretty much said if you want to enter the pits you're going to crash into the wall and uh D'Souza in the double zero car lost quite a bit of ground and uh, they had to repair the damage on uh, the on the double zero car Taub interestingly enough didn't get any damage uh, or if he did they didn't repair it so um uh, the Swede definitely taking advantage of an opportunity and uh taking advantage of Gaspar D'Souza as well um, in car double zero, and uh, D'Souza is still going to get a pretty solid result out of this, but he's uh, he's way back in line right now. Here's Packer Carroll in car number two. Um, this is easily his best race of the season, especially because he started in the back and he's fought his way through the field. You just wonder though, is this a little too little, too late? Because uh, Packer Carroll's drive has been on the line pretty much the entire season long, so. Um, and uh, given uh, given Volpe's uh, recent temperament, I wouldn't entirely be surprised if uh, this is, if uh, Packer Carroll's uh, sacking is announced fairly soon. Uh, with that being said, though, Packer does have some options open for 2014 as he's got Kevin Dwyer behind him. I have a feeling we'll see him in the Master Cup Series. Oh, Dwyer into the into the dirt over there, and he uh, didn't really want to continue that. But there's a guy Packer Carroll doesn't really get along with right behind him, but. That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if Packer Carroll uh, is uh, actually buys out the Nomoto team because there's been quite a few talks that that'll happen with uh, Japanese manufacturer Isani looking to buy out, uh, looking to end of the series as well because uh, they are entering uh, into um, into Arla next season as well. Matthias Taub in car number 10 is slowly beginning to reel in Melanie Klevno in the uh, as this race closes out. Klevno in the 12 car is slowly losing ground to Roderick, and I don't think it's because Klevno is uh, me is just sort of meekly giving up. Uh, I have a feeling Klevno is trying to hold on to second as much she as much as she possibly can, but uh, I just don't think that car has enough in it really for the full beam. Got the same engine as Taub's got, but Leonard Roderick in car number four really didn't have any opposition or any problems the rest of the way through. Coming off the final corner, Leonid Roderick in car number four takes the win here at Colorado with uh, Melanie Klevno in second and Matthias Taub, the championship leader, finishing out the podium. So, uh, a pretty solid run also for Zelda Ashby and Arto Kekkonen who completed the top five. Pat on the back to Packer Carroll and Kevin Dwyer. Gaspar D'Souza dropped the field very, very quickly after, um, 
there was more tire rub on that double zero car than we thought. And uh, he had a uh, fairly long last pit stop. Dropped him down to ninth as uh, slowly went backwards. Michael Sykes completes the top 10. Zach Duff, we didn't mention him at all. A solid, solid run. Uh, started 19th, finished 11th. Chris Johans, Ian Cooper in the uh, 777 car. No penalty assessed to that car, very surprisingly. And Jacob Eichel, it's in that 31 car. And Ben Huron in the 43 are the only independent trophy cars to walk away with championship points this week. And let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. And Matthias Taub has a staggering lead in the in the Drivers' Championship. I'm not sure if a penalty will be assessed to him for that incident in pit in with Gaspar D'Souza. But even still, 112 points coming into Australia over Michael Sykes means uh, pretty much that no one can no one can really surpass him coming uh, in the next two races. But Michael Sykes, Adrian Devereaux is a, is a full two races out of the championship lead. So, uh, I think really this could be a two-race horse for the title between Michael Sykes and Matthias Taub and everyone else, pretty much a rank outsider. We've still got quite a few races to go, but uh, it's looking to be very much um, a two-race horse for the championship as it sits. And uh, here's how the Independence Trophy looks. Jacob Eicholtz's uh, mulligan race was earlier in the season, it looks like, because uh, he comes just a few points short of eclipsing Dan Lechleiter. Ben Huron, however, is sitting right there. Uh, he's only uh, three. He's only three points back on Lackleiter, which means um, in Ben Huron's last race, he only needs to finish, I do believe, 23rd or 22nd to um, eclipse Lackleiter's lead in the Independence Trophy. So um, that could make for a very interesting race once that comes along. But until then, the next time we will see the TM Master Cup Series in action is for the Australian Tour. The two Australian races are next. First of which is the round of Victoria at Calder Park in Victoria, Australia.